Did you know that we consume up to 5 grams of microplastics every week? Plastics are literally in everything, from your technology to your clothing. From farms to grocery stores, you can't escape them. They are used to build our vehicles, our drinkware, our exercise equipment, and everything in between. The invention and development of plastics from the late 19th century to today has been both a blessing and a curse. In today's video, we want to talk about a fascinating alternative. Fungus. Yes, fungus. Can we move forward without plastics that are harmful to our bodies and the environment? Can a material based off of fungus, specifically mycelium, create the next revolution in an industry that has relied so heavily on synthetics? Can mushrooms save the world? These answers and more in today's video. Welcome to Tech Mandate! Did you know we only recycle a sad 9% of the plastic we consume? That means over 90% of plastics are floating around in the world, and as we know, it never biodegrades. It's literally in our food sources, which is why we eat 5 grams of the stuff each week. What if there was a resource available that could replace plastic? How would that work, and would the plastic manufacturers of the world ever let it happen? It may seem like there are a variety of different plastics out there, and you'd be right. They all do have one thing in common, regardless of shape, size, or use. They are all made from the same class of materials, polymers. This is a blanket term that references a substance made with large molecules, made up of repeating subunits that are bound together. Originally discovered in the late 19th century, but perfected in the early 20th century, the biggest boom for plastics came during World War II. Necessity is the mother of invention after all, and with so many resources being used for the war effort, manufacturers found ways to use synthetics to build their products. Once manufacturers found an endless, inexpensive resource, their marketing departments must have taken over because plastics are everywhere. They have made life easier and more convenient, but regrettably, the idea that we could recycle this material and reuse it has been highly exaggerated and led to massive pollution over the last few decades. Careless disposing of plastic bottles, bags, and even straws makes huge impacts on our oceans and ecosystems. We can't bury or burn it without releasing toxins into the earth or harming our atmosphere. At what cost are we willing to continue to produce products that harm ourselves and the world around us? Because there are so many plastics out there, can we ever free ourselves? What could possibly sustainably replace plastics as we attempt to save our planet? What if we told you the answer lies rooted in the earth itself? Mycelium, the root of fungus or mushrooms, has shown great promise on being the versatile organic replacement of our dreams. Let's start with how fungi work in nature. As they grow, they release an enzyme that allows the plant to digest the surrounding matter and absorb any nutrients found there. Like all roots, it grows out into the soil and builds a network system, known as a mycelial network. Only after this is established, the flower or mushroom top can then blossom. This is the point at which we can harness Mother Nature's hard work for our purposes and provide a framework in which this material can grow and be used in multiple ways. Take a look at this brick. It's actually mycelium cultivated into brick form, just like one would use a mold to shape plastics or even metal. How does the production of this work? Well, it all starts with waste. Using a process that mimics nature, simple agricultural waste like wood chips or food scraps can start the work by binding to the mycelium structured network. The product of this marriage is called the foam, and with proper humidity levels, airflow, temperature, and CO2, you can mold this foam into any shape required within a week or so. This mycelium foam has been studied and tested proving to be strong, safe, resilient, and most importantly, biodegradable. None of the fungi is still living at the end result and therefore can be preserved and formed into almost anything. This result can then be used in place of plastics and synthetics for a whole host of products like construction, clothing, packaging, food sources, and more. 
The whole process of creating this foam is just as affordable as making plastics, which has been a major hurdle to overcome in this profit-driven global economy. It also has the potential to make strides in reducing carbon emissions so often associated with plastics. One of the largest offenders of plastic pollution comes from packaging materials. Think about it, almost any packaged food product comes wrapped in a plastic bag, even if it's inside a cardboard box. While we have relied on plastic to keep our food fresh, there is an opportunity for mushroom-based packaging to work just as well, using a fraction of the energy to create and generating 90% fewer carbon emissions than plastics. Another major pollution offender is the meat industry. You may have noticed a sizable shift in the last few years away from industrial animal farming due to their impact on the environment perhaps due to the influx of plant-based meat replacements that are tasting more and more like regular meat with every new product. The fibrous makeup of mycelium is very much like the natural tissues in meat and therefore holds up well to the cooking methods we use for meat. Replacing meat with plant-based alternatives could make a substantial impact on the earth and climate change. Something important to note here is that this technology is relatively new, but has already been widely tested and even patented. It's been 15 years since the company Evocative developed its mycelium knowledge and now has grown into more than 40 patents in over 30 countries. Its trademarked Mycoflex technology is now being used to produce insulating, breathable, high-performance clothing like footwear and gloves. While the company Bolt Threads is using trademark Milo technology to replace leather, popular brands like Adidas, Lululemon, and designer Stella McCartney are finding ways to incorporate this leather alternative into their fashion lines. We've talked about packaging, food sources, and even clothing, but what else can be made out of the magical morphing mycelium? How about building materials? There are countless ways plastics have taken over in construction and building. Could all of these be replaced with a biodegradable counterpart? The UK-based company Biome thinks so. They are developing and implementing the world's first mycelium-based insulation panels. Under studies, these panels actually outperform their plastic counterparts. They can absorb up to 75% of 1000 Hz, which is the equivalent to frequent road noise and traffic. Maybe it can keep you from hearing your kids argue in the room down the hall too. In addition to its performance as an insulator, it is also a safer option. How? Well, consider the impact of an emergency like a fire on a home. What the toxins in the building material can do to the air quality in the surrounding areas. Because mycelium is natural and not synthetic, there would be no toxins to release. While people are researching the possible use of this material in structural building materials, don't count on mycelium to replace good old-fashioned concrete or wood for building, at least not yet. There are people all over the globe looking for other uses of mycelium. Could we use this material in actual technology hardware? Researchers are looking at the possibilities of combining hemp and mycelium with computer sensors to see how they transmit energy and stimuli. Although very technical, it doesn't seem impossible, and with the support of prominent scientists, we could see strides in this industry within the next few years. With so much support from industries all over the world, expect mycelium to become a more household name in the years to come. Its impact is already felt in the financial sectors as the global mushroom market is reaching new heights annually, currently rising at a rate of 12.4% every year as reported by Global Newswire. We can anticipate sustained growth over the next decade. We may even surpass this expectation with more and more regions outright banning plastic materials in items like straws, packaging, and plastic carrying bags. What are your thoughts? Now that you know more about mycelium, do you think more countries and areas should look into making the switch away from plastics? Do you think it has a sustainable future? Are there better alternatives? Make your voice heard in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, if you're into content like this, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to Tech Mandate for all the latest content.